Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Well, how can it dwell in you when you don't memorize it? It's to stay with you, not just look at it and close the book. Let the word of God, Christ dwell in you, not just on the table where you can read it, in you, richly, in all wisdom, plenty of it, and the right interpretation. The Holy Spirit is the interpreter. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. Then Christians are to preach to each other. And they help each other and teach each other and admonish each other. And when he mentions this, he mentions music. Now, here is a very important passage, uh, 316. The way to remember it is to remember it as a companion of John 316. Remember Colossians 316. You'll have the three kinds of Christian music there are. There are three kinds of Christian music. Psalms. The whole book of Psalms is a book of songs. That's what the word means. 150. The plain words, the largest book in the Bible in either testament is a song book. You say, why? Well, because when God made the heaven and the earth, uh, the morning stars sang together. And all the, all the sons of God sang for joy. That's what's going on. A uh, song shows up before Adam shows up. And if you read your Bible, when you get the last uh, book, what do you find? Harps. Harping the harps. And they sing the song of the Lamb and the song of Moses. Bob Jones Singer used to say, Every bad thing on this earth is a good thing twisted. And if you wanted a perfect example, you take two of the uh, world's most valuable things, and that'll be love and music. And you take those two things and twist them a quarter of an inch, and you're in danger, and you twist them a foot, and they'll open the doors of hell for you in the smoke of the bottomless pit. Every bad thing on this earth is a good thing. That's the positive look. Twisted. That's how it goes. Now, psalms are songs. One time I was dealing with a Muslim here in town about his religion, about his prophet, God's prophet, supposedly, Allah's prophet. And he was talking about how he loved him and this and that. And I said, sing me a song about him. And he couldn't do it. He couldn't sing one song about the man he chose, whose religion he's tried to follow all his life and had followed for 14 centuries. And he couldn't sing one song about him. Must have been some wrong with somebody he picked to follow. The one I follow has some books all over the country with 500 songs in them about him, 500 songs about a dead man. And the one I picked has little boys and girls singing songs about him and women singing songs about him. Did you ever hear a woman sing a song praising Muhammad? Somebody got a problem. You know what that Muslim told me? He said, well, no, not, not music, not psalms. Uh, psalms, he said, music is, uh, is of Satan. And I just laughed at him. The man he professed to follow, Muhammad, said he believed the Old Testament and even used the Old Testament to prove that he's the chosen Messiah himself. If he believed the Old Testament, he had to believe the psalms, and the psalms are 150 pieces of music. Some people, the only time they lie is when they open their mouth. And admonishing one another in psalms, that's one kind of Christian music. Hymns, that's a hymn book. They not, may not be the psalms set to music, although the psalms were set to music. But hymns are additional uh, pr uh, songs of praise beside the psalms. Uh, an average hymn book in America in a Baptist church contains 400 to 500 songs in it about a dead man. Let's see you imitate that in any religion. I mean, we'll try, while you're trying to get the Tower of Babel together, you get everybody the same with the same language and the same skin and the same talk and the same walk and the same, you know, the classless society, how come you can't produce any dead man that somebody has 400 songs about? What are there, 7 billion people in the world? And 12 religions? And only one even talks about it. What? A hymn book. Where are the songs about Buddha? Did you ever hear him sung? Did you ever hear a Buddhist singing a song about how much he loved Buddha because Buddha helped him so much? You never will. Did you ever hear a Muslim praising uh, Muhammad for blessing him and taking care of his family and giving him good health and giving him a home in heaven? Of course you didn't. You say, why? Because he couldn't. 
I'm not attacking anybody's religion. I'm trying to make you face the fact and the truth instead of running around in the dark. Psalms and hymns, and here's the third kind, spiritual songs. Now, that's the great big hillbilly bunch, the big gospel singing bunch that get make up songs that are outside the psalms, outside the hymn books, but they're spiritual. Uh, people have different tastes for things that are spiritual. Some think some songs are spiritual that aren't. Some think that one guy thinks that his song is spiritual, and the other guy has something else. And that's all right if they deal with the spirit. Now, do you know how to tell a spiritual song when you hear music? And some of it's just uh, uh, instruments. It's not all lyrics. A lot of it is the, is the instruments. A spiritual song will remind you, if you're a Christian, it'll remind you of something about yourself or Christ or your relationship to Christ or something about heaven or something about hell or something about your relationship to your brothers and sisters in Christ or something about orders given to you by Christ or some things about Christ or the Bible you want to remember. Songs that accomplish those are spiritual songs, and people have different tastes. They don't really get uh, a lift uh, or get sent, as we used to say in the old swing band days, sent by something. Another one doesn't. It doesn't turn them on. Uh, you take me. Uh, I, the thing that that raises my morale the most outside of the hymn book itself, the hymns about Christ. Outside of that and outside of the songs, strangely enough, are, are, are German songs. And most of them are military. Do you know why that is? Because I've observed time after time after time after time that God used unsaved men as rebukes to Christians. I can give you story after story after story, which is true historically, about German soldiers and sometimes American soldiers that had gone the limit and beyond the limit when it came to guts and had nerve and courage you just wouldn't believe when they had nothing and when they lost. Now, I've only been to Germany five times, but I've noticed over there in the five times I went that that country had a greater national spirit toward nationalism and a greater loyalty toward their, their people after losing two wars than America has after winning two wars. That's the kind of stuff that turned me on to see an unsaved man surpass me in courage and loyalty and strength and faithfulness and he can go right by me like I was standing still. To me, that's a, a, that's a, that's a mentor. That's a role model. And the fact that a lot of them are unsaved and a lot of them are probably died and went to hell has nothing to do with the music they produce. The music they produce held them up and strengthened them evidentially more than our hymns and strengthen us. You can learn lessons from watching a dog because most dogs are more faithful and more loyal and more courageous than most men. Do you hear what I said? Probably not. Spiritual song, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And then a great teaching here. He says in verse 17, Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father by Him.